Hello everyone! It's time to talk about what else I saw in July. <laughs> I'm having a hard time keeping track of the months. This is August. That was July. I was able to do full reviews for a lot of the things I saw last month, though I'm a little bit behind on a couple of them, but there are still a few noteworthy movies that I didn't get to mention, so here we go! As I said a few videos ago, Ronald Coleman was the star of the month on Turner Classic Movies for July. Woohoo! I got to see several movies that were new to me, and Coleman was all that I could hope for in every single one of them. I saw 1926's silent western romance, The Winning of Barbara Worth, with Coleman, Vilma Bankey, and young Gary Cooper in his first big role. I saw 1938's If I Were King, which a lot of Coleman fans had told me I needed to see. Coleman gets to make some lovely poetic speeches and do some swashbuckling, and I love his hair. But the real revelation in this movie was Basil Rathbone as Louis XI. It took me a full minute to recognize him. The hilarity of his performance was completely unexpected and I loved it. I got to see most of 1935's Clive of India, which features a mustacheless Coleman opposite Loretta Young. They have some nice scenes together, including a touching ending. I saw the first half of 1939's The Light That Failed. This one and If I Were King were both ones that I was really looking forward to seeing for the first time, and as far as The Light That Failed goes, I enjoyed what I saw of it, but I absolutely had to go to bed and I couldn't finish it and I still haven't gotten to finish it yet. There's that, and I also still have Sinara and the late George Apley to watch. They played in the middle of the night, and I just couldn't keep staying up that late on Thursday nights, so I had to tape and wait. But I have something to look forward to! I only have three World War II movies to mention on the list this time. There was another one, but I'm skipping that because, well, frankly, wasn't very good. <laughs> we saw 1959's Up Periscope, a submarine movie starring James Garner and Edmund O'Brien. Garner plays a Navy frogman hired for a secret mission to come aboard O'Brien's sub, get dropped off near a Japanese island, sneak in and take some photos, and get back by a certain time. That time crunch makes things very tense, especially as O'Brien's men are already testy about the death of a sailor on their last outing because Commander O'Brien wouldn't let them surface subplot in the beginning that I could have dispensed with because, well, I'd rather not have my war movies spend too much time on romantic entanglements, but once it got past that, it picked up the pace and got fairly exciting toward the end. We also saw 2006's Letters from Iwo Jima, the Japanese movie that Clint Eastwood made as a companion piece to his other film of that year, Flags of Our Fathers. Where Flags of Our Fathers covered the U.S. Marines' invasion of the island, Letters from Iwo Jima depicts the battle from the Japanese perspective. It is a bleak movie, as was Flags, and I did think it was a little unclear on the passage of time, which I concede might have been purposeful to convey the chaos of battle, or because so much time was spent in tunnels where there was minimal sunlight, but I still thought it was an interesting movie with a unique point of view. I especially enjoyed Ken Watanabe's performance, his gradual backstory reveal, and his interactions with the reluctant soldier he keeps running into on the island. And we also saw another sub-movie, 2000's U571. The movie follows a group of men who have been assigned to track down a German U-boat that has been attacked. On board is the Enigma coding machine, which the Americans want to seize before the sub sinks or more Germans come answering the distress call. So the Americans disguise themselves as Germans and come aboard. Unfortunately, the plan goes awry from there, and the Americans end up stuck on the damaged German U-boat, which is not a good place to be in the middle of a war. I'm kind of surprised to say that I think of these three movies, I enjoyed this one the most. It had a tense scenario throughout and good action, and just made for a good war flick. Moving on, I saw two movies this month that made me want to throw up. That's a nice distinction, isn't it? The first one was The Shallows, last year's shark movie starring Blake Lively as a med student who goes out surfing, gets bitten by a shark, and ends up fighting for her life in the water. At first, I was not into this. There was a little too much, ooh, look at the hot girl surfing music video type stuff. Plus, I thought it was dumb that she went to this middle-of-nowhere beach alone in the first place. But once things started happening, it got better. Well, it didn't get better for her, it just got worse for her as these things go. It was one of those movies where anything that can go wrong does go wrong, and oh my goodness, that scene where she's... 
checking out her injury and she, you know, the necklace and everything. That was, ugh. You know I've seen some gory R-rated war movies this year, but it was a PG-13 shark movie that almost took me out. Somehow though, I did end up liking it well enough, even though the climactic resolution was a little unbelievable. The other movie that made me feel sick was Life, which came out earlier this year. Life is about a scientific research team on the International Space Station that has gone on a mission to retrieve potential living organisms on Mars. They find something, and then everything goes wrong. The movie starts off at kind of a sedate pace, lulling you into a false sense of security with all this science and optimism, and then BAM! Everything goes wrong in this one long disturbing, upsetting sequence. That's where I felt sick. Um, it was, it was stressful. A stressful movie, but I guess it was the good kind of stressful because I was thoroughly entertained and I liked it. I have had to ask myself, would I have liked it as much if Jake Gyllenhaal wasn't in it? Probably, but that was a bonus. <laughs> I think I remember that some people were critical of the movie because it reminded them of Alien. Those similarities were there, but that didn't bother me. I thought there were sufficient changes to make it its own thing. And anyway, if you enjoy movies about people stuck on a ship with a murderous space monster, I don't see why you like one but be super critical of another just because it reminds you of the other movie. That is a subgenre and there are bound to be similarities between the different movies, whether it's Alien or Life or 1958's It, The Terror from Beyond Space, which is a fun creepy movie that nobody ever talks about anymore, or 1968's The Green Slime, which is a cult favorite of many. The last movie on this month's list is another movie from this year, Kong Skull Island. I heard all kinds of reviews for this movie, positive, negative, some people ripped it apart, some people thought it was fun. I think it's all a matter of perspective. I was tentatively looking forward to it, but I knew not to take it too seriously and didn't have insanely high expectations, and I ended up having a pretty good time with it. It is imperfect, it has its dispensable characters, some oddly played humor, a couple anticlimactic deaths, and it's a little overstylized in spots. But it also had some interesting creature designs, cool moments, fun action. Plus there's Tom Hiddleston, who I still think is hot, even though I stopped being obsessed with him well over a year ago. Maybe this is telling, but I felt similarly about 2014's Godzilla. It has weak spots, weak characters, but also some cool designs and effects and exciting scenes. I went into it looking for an entertaining giant monster movie, and that's pretty much what I got. So I look forward to seeing King Kong and Godzilla fight whenever that comes out, along with any other of those monsters that they roll out. I was pretty enthusiastic about that end credit scene, even though I felt like a massive dork because I was able to identify some of those easter eggs. Um, I've seen four or five of those old Japanese kaiju movies, and I think Mom and I are gonna watch some more because we're in the mood. Let me know if you want to see reviews of those movies, I think it could be fun. And let me know what you thought of this month's list. I know it was eclectic as usual, but I thank you for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you in a couple of days. Thanks for watching!